Patentram Sarwanto, the master gongsmith, supervises the weighing of the material. Copper from electrical cable, favored because of its purity, and raw tin are used in a ratio of 10 to 3. The molten bronze is poured into the gong mold. Rice husks are sprinkled onto the top and burst into flame. This assures that the surface doesn't cool too rapidly and that internal cracks don't develop. Once sufficiently cooled, the disc, measuring about 11 inches in diameter, is taken out of the mold. A team of four men wielding 20-pound steel hammers strike the piece as it is rotated by the handler. The disc is hammered in concentric circles until it is no longer red hot and must be returned to the fire for reheating. At another anvil, the smiths set the exact angle of the wall and refine the shape of the shoulder and rim. Before quenching the piece, it is evenly heated to a red-hot temperature. Meanwhile, a steel collar has been formed to be put on the gong's open edge so as to limit any distortion in shape when it is suddenly cooled in the water. A final check of its circularity is made and then, rather uneventfully, the gong is quenched. A long wooden lever is used to exert great pressure on the gong while two men hammer the instrument, coaxing the now tempered bronze into its final shape. The voicing of the instrument is done by Tentram himself. Hammering in particular places, he raises or lowers the pitch and balances the various vibrations which form the complex overtone structure of the instrument. As the voice becomes unified, he temporarily affixes clay to the surface, which alters the vibrations of different parts of the gong. Now roughly voiced, the gong is scraped prior to its tuning. The finishing tools are handmade rasps and store-bought files. As a demonstration, Tentrum shows instruments in three stages of completion. last hundreds of years. These compools of the venerable gamelan 
Kiai Kanyut Mesem, were made by a process handed down through an oral tradition for generations. And the tradition continues today.